Power forward from Cagayan Valley, number 18, Troy Rosario. In at center from Cebu, number 21, Kelly Williams. Coaching the Tropang Giga is Chot Reyes. It is now time to meet the starters for Barangay Hinebra San Miguel. Point guard from Nasug Bubatangas, number 5, L.A. Tenorio. Shooting guard from Cagayan Valley, number 11, Stanley Bringo. Small forward from San Carlos, Pangasinan, number 2, Jerry Dillinger. Power forward from Quezon City, number 12, Prince Caperal. In at center from Angona Rizal, number 34, Christian Stan Hardinger. Coaching Barangay Hinebra is Tim Cohn. This game will be officiated by G. So your starters, Montalbo, Mikey Williams, Kelly Williams, Rosario and Pogoy for TNT, Tenorio Pringle, Stan Hardinger, Caperal, and Jared Dillinger for Barangay Ginebra. You know, these two entries, Prince Caperal and Jared Dillinger, played important minutes, important roles in that ball game against the Phoenix Super LPG Field Masters in the knockout match for Barangay Ginebra. Let's see if they could keep it going. Here in this next knockout match against TNT, this tip-off is brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. Look at that, give Montalbo immediately making his presence felt on defense, blocking Jared Dillinger. So our early matchup will be Dillinger trying to slow down Mikey Williams as Rosario comes up open for 3-0 there. Rebound for Stan Hardinger. One of the best defensive rebounders in the league right now, Stan Hardinger usually doing a good job just making sure that they will only allow one basket and Tropangiga was not able to make their initial try. So it is Pogoy defending Pringle. They switch it as Pringle misses. That would be a loose ball foul against Christian. So it's not Pringle versus Mikey Williams just yet, but when there is a small to small ball screen, it looks like the defense will just switch. That is a game plan. Every time two small guys will be involved in ball screen situations, it's an automatic switch because there is no distinct advantage. So we will expect that one. Uh, time and again, the scouting report would be such that uh, all the guards, if your defender is defending one guy, you must be able to know their respective tendencies. Two misses from the outside for Troy Rosario to open this matchup. Coach, early in this game, ano yung gusto mo makita from Barangay Ginebra to, to make you feel that they are in this to win this and that they have an opportunity to upset TNT? Uh, that, that is exactly what they need to do. Getting mileage from guys who are not really known scorers, people who struggled in the elimination round. Jared Dillinger, as an example, did not play good basketball except for that knockout game against Phoenix. So right now, he's losing with so much confidence, and those are the extra points that they need. Why? Because of the absence of Scotty Thompson. Scotty Thompson is a double-double guy. He will give you 12 points per game and 10 rebounds, but unfortunately, because of health protocols, he will not be able to suit up for Barangay Ginebra. The good news naman for Barangay Ginebra is that Arvin Tolentino is back with the team and in uniform. Japet Aguilar is in uniform and is not wearing the knee brace. Could that be a sign that, you know, Coach Tim might just use him in this ball game? We do not know just yet. What we do know is TNT has missed their first three shots all from the outside in our opening two minutes. Pringle with a quick move, no good, but he taps the ball out to Dillinger for an extra possession for Barangay Ginebra. Quick entry pass, Stan Hardinger, the one-hander, won't work. Might be another loose ball foul coming up here, contra naman kay Prince Caperal. And that is the sole responsibility of Kelly Williams. What he needs to do is to push out Stan Hardinger, do not let him get near the basket and just play on his defense. A missed shot on the first one by, uh, by uh, Stan Hardinger and uh, for TNT. We expect a little bit of a rust because the last time they played was over a week ago. So we expect them to just push the ball and try to score an easy basket, try to get some shots off from uh, deep but for as long as they, even if they miss, for as long as they make the, the stops and the, the, the score is uh, well within range. Four misses from the outside to open this ball game. Finally, they get a basket from Kim Montalbo. And that is the kind of game that they play. Even if they miss, they just play with, again, so much confidence from the outside. If they see an open look, expect the guards or even some of the four guys or even five guys, Foy Adam, for example, even Kelly Williams, they, they have the license to shoot. 
from beyond the white line. Oh, sorry, miss. They are coming from RR Pogoy. I think the ball slipped out from his hand for an air ball. Williams defending LA Tenorio. Three minutes gone by in this first quarter. Tenorio for three. No good. He has, he has struggled in that game against TNT. That might be a lift or it's an offensive foul, rather, against Rosario. Uh, Troy Rosario was trying to get an edge because he was only guarded by a guy smaller than him. Unfortunately, he will be guilty for an offensive foul. Interesting pace and tempo that Barangay Ginebra is playing here. If it's going to be a fast ball game, I see this as an advantage for Tropangiga simply because of the number of players that they play. If Barangay Ginebra goes on with this kind of a pace and the, they lack two or three players in their rotation, then they might lose steam towards the end. L.A. Tenorio missing once again, but he gets the offensive rebound. In their elimination round battle, Tenorio was 0 for 13 from the field. He found himself scoreless in that entire ball game. And Stan Hardinger regains the lead for Barangay Ginebra. Oh, you just uh, can see a different kind of Barangay Ginebra here in the quarterfinals. I was asked one time, am I surprised that Barangay Ginebra is actually uh, having a hard time uh, winning games in the elimination round? My answer was, I am surprised that uh, despite the number of injuries that they've had, a lot of uh, games wherein they lost big after the 48 minutes of basketball action, and they are still here. Yeah. That means it's a never-die spirit that is known and part of the culture of Coach Tim Cohn's team. And they won the first game of the gauntlet. That game against the Fuel Masters was step number one. Steps number two and number three will be two more knockout games against uh, TNT Tropangiga. But again, Coach, going back to your point, if there is a team that can pull that off, why not Barangay Ginebra? Oh, yes, and the, and the moniker right there, that hashtag NSD. We've seen it time and again since the time of uh, the legend uh, coach Sonny Jaworski. Every time you play Barangay Ginebra, even if you're the top seed, you just could not take things for granted. And another strong start here for Barangay Ginebra. That guy right there was the best player in the last game against Phoenix Field Masters. We're talking about Prince Capiral. And you expect him again to shoot a lot of baskets because of the absence of uh, Chapit Aguilar. Certainly a good sign for Coach Tim Cohn to have Prince Capiral locked in as Gib Montalbo misses with that triple. Alos puro sa labas yung tira ng TNT Tropang Giga. As you can see, RR Pogoy already uh, feeling the pace of this matchup. As you said, Coach Ryan, mabilis yung magiging laro. Ginebra is trying to push the basketball. And now the luxury. Having a Jason Castro come off the bench. You've mentioned it, a lot of three-point shots taken by the guards. And Jason Castro will now come in with fresh legs and he will be able to break down anybody and uh, go for his uh, blur moves on the way to a higher percentage basket. This is very interesting. Another bigger defender in Aljon Mariano contra Mikey Williams. This is Kelly Williams missing from deep as the struggles continue from the outside. One of eight now from downtown. Total of one of nine from the field for TNT. This is a, a start that is a little bit familiar for TNT because this is how they started against the San Miguel Beermen as well. The big difference was SMB started out hot, built a double-digit lead off the gates as they, were, they never looked back from that point. And historically, if you look back in the elimination round, there are games wherein they really start so slow. But because of their experience, their maturity as well as their confidence, there is no panic in the eyes of the players. Coach Shot Reyes exactly knows that his team is capable of bouncing back. This is, again, one of the best starts that we've seen Barangay Ginebra play in this particular conference. We can pop something that we do not see a lot coming from Stan Hardinger. He converts on that set shot. 8-3, to three, the biggest lead of the ball game for Barangay Ginebra. Ringle goes back to Stan Hardinger. Misses this time Eram in the ball game, replacing Kelly Williams. Castro attack. Nothing there. As Barangay Ginebra will once again try to go on the run. Tenorio open for three. Nothing there. Caperal, second effort. Gord with the left. 
and forcing Coach Shot Reyes to call a timeout here because TNT are taking shots from the outside, which could be higher percentage if he had an option. TNT only scoring three points with 5 and 55 remaining in the first. This timeout is brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. First quarter of this ball game between the TNT Tropong Giga and Barangay Ginebra San Miguel and currently Barangay Ginebra is not playing like an eighth seed going up against the first seed. Oh yes, uh, they were ready to play from the get-go and not only were they playing so well offensively, they know exactly the advantages that they had and the, the better aspect was they allowed TNT prior to that shot limited them to just one out of ten shooting from the field and one out of eight from the three-point area a timely basket there for your tnt to keep the score a little closer how about keep montalbo with two baskets to start this ball game so in in his role inside the pba bubble last conference coach he was mo mostly known as a defender but he's getting his opportunities to score under coach a very impressive uh, development for Cape montalbo you're correct initially he was just known to be a pesky defender and just making life miserable against anybody he is guarding against but now he has added an arsenal in his war chest by scoring from the outside and also having that uh, green light to score whenever he is open. And as you noted, Coach Ryan, when Jason Castro made it to the ball game, he will change things up. Hindi po mapasok yung mga three-point shots nila. So he will try to get in, draw fouls. Three drives already for the blur in his first few minutes in this contest. I said it was a luxury for Coach Shotreyas to have a professional scorer to come off the bench. Jason Castro can shoot from the outside, can stop for a pull-up jumper and even all the way for a lay. But it's also a great opportunity for Jason Castro to see what is happening inside because he was on the bench for the first five minutes of basketball action. He sees exactly the kind of defensive coverage that he can uh, extricate from. And now he knows that because the defense is such that the pressure is so strong from the guards of Barangay Hinebra, that is his cue to put the ball down and just go for his layups. Five unanswered points, sorry, four unanswered points rather for TNT. And they turn the ball over almost. Mikey Williams just running out of space on the sideline there. 10 to 7 is the score. Three point lead for Barangay Hinebra with less than five minutes remaining in our first quarter of action. We thank you so much for joining us on PBA Rush. Carlo Pamintuan with Coach Ryan Gregorio on the call. Pringle draws two defenders. Caperal, one dribble, pull up jumper, too strong. Rebound Castro. Jason attacks the middle again. Nice dish to Rosario. Extra pass to the outside. Eram did not want to pull the trigger as he goes inside and is fouled. Prince Caperal whistled for a personal. Yep, there was a push and then there was a hack. As JP Aram was trying to take a shot. A couple of free throws coming up for JP Aram.
coach the additional challenges of being inside the uh, setup. This is a semi bubble, of course. JP Eram missed the birth of his second child, but you know, kasama talaga yun eh. If you are focused on your career, focus on your performance, sometimes you have to miss out key moments in your in your family. It's definitely a supreme sacrifice for everybody who is inside the bubble trying to make themselves uh, up available in playoff situations and it is just part of uh, the new normal that we're living under coach Yang Gyo was quoted as saying they actually have two battles right now one yep. is the battle to win and the other one is the battle to stay negative and good thing for most of these players they have remained um, negative and uh, especially the guys who are playing right now that is why they're allowed to play Mikey Williams had the ball stripped by Jeff Chan. Tatakbo ang Barangay Hinebra. Ringo with a cross-court pass to Mariano. Aljon sets his face. But the defense of J.P. Aram is all over him. Oh, good read coming from Ryan Reyes, but he could not take the ball away from Stanley Pringle, who will not get the bounce with a shot, but he will take two. It's going to be a good matchup, and Stan Pringle will have a hard time trying to elude the defense of uh, uh, Ryan Reyes while a perimeter jumper here for Aljun Mariano also missed a lot of games at the start of this conference but now s staying in, in, in game shape and more than that playing with so much stability that is exactly why coach Tim Cohn is uh, so respectful the game of uh, Aljun Mariano because even if he's small he can guard taller guys even in the post and not only that he's very intelligent making extra passes and his ability to shoot from the perimeter is actually helping the offensive system of Barangay Hinebra both free throws good for Pringle as Barangay Hinebra has rebuilt a five point advantage 14 to 9 Castro had a ball strip Pringle with a quick hand getting the steal Gambled with a steal. Luckily for him, they get a stop. Jason attacks middle. Lefty layup is good. Again, a penetration. Jason Castro, because of fresh legs, coming into the playoffs, still has enough energy to attack his defender. A lot of the shots of Jason are coming from high percentage layup shots. A clear foul committed there by JP Era. Might have been cleared up top, pero nakayakap yung kaliwang braso nitong si JP Eram. But first, look at this. The handoff from Ryan Reyes. The good finish coming from the blur. But Stan Hardinger is on the line for a couple of lefty free throws. Did you keep track on the free throw percentage? of Stan Hardinger when he was still using his right hand. <laughs> because right now it's 54%. Obviously a little higher than the 50% uh, clip. Acceptable, uh, yes, uh, but could be better. Uh, now again, another 50% trip from the free throw line for C. Stan. 15 to 11 now. Mikey Williams has yet to score in this ball game. Dahil nakafocus talaga yung defense sa kanya. Layup will not work. Kelly Williams with the putback and the foul. Uh, usually, at this age, Kelly Williams would just be a serviceable big guy. But he's not showing that he's just there for minutes. He is there because he had so much value in this team. Not only defensively, but look at that. Fighting for that loose ball, getting the offensive rebound and the putback, and an extra free throw after this timeout.
RR Pogoy checking in alongside LA Tenorio, replacing Stanley Pringle. So, Coach Ryan, it, it seems like Coach Tim will continue his ploy of not allowing his team to be without either Pringle or Tenorio on the floor at any given time. Oh, the important thing for Barangay Ginebra is there should always be at least one or two guys who must score, manufacture points for them. And from the guard position, it's obvious that it's either Stan Pringle and L.A. Tenorio. So he cannot afford to have those two guards sit down at the same time because that will leave them with a very big vacuum on the guys that he can expect to score for his team. 15 points for Barangay Ginebra, good spread so far from big guys contributing in the scoring department and also from the perimeter players. Lalo na coach, wala yung Scotty Thompson who could have acted as your extra playmaker kung magpapahinga man si Tenorio at Castro. Uh, Stan Hardinger drives against Kelly Williams. Good defense coming from Kelly. But Ginebra will get the ball back. Immediately, though, they turn it over. They throw it away, courtesy of an er errant pass from Aljon Mariano. Showing tougher defensive stance was Kelly Williams. Physical enough, but not uh, that tight for the referees to call a foul. In the first few minutes, TNT turned the ball over four times. Barangay Ginebra now accounting for three turnovers. So it's pretty much like they're just canceling out each other. Rebound picked up by Stan Hardinger. Uh, Ginebra will attempt to add on to this two-point lead. Both teams already in the penalty situation as you approach the final two minutes of the first quarter. Devance to the bounce pass to Stan Hardinger. Tight pass. And there's a scramble with Ryan Reyes picking the ball up. R.R. Pogoy to Glenn Cobontin. Down low. Good move coming from the better. Oh, this is another great pickup in the offseason for Tropangiga. Cobontin. Initially, you expect him to play tough defense. But what is showing is his ability to shoot from the outside and finish fast break situations. And they're not losing anything in the quickness department. So the defense leaving Eli Tenorio open. That is his first basket in almost five quarters against the TNT Tropangiga. As he was left scoreless in their elimination round meeting, lead is back to two for Barangay Ginebra. And a case of miscommunication there for Tropangiga. Two guys not talking to each other and failing to put a body in front of LA Tenorio. So TNT weathering the early storm coming from Barangay Ginebra. It was 10 to 3 early. Maybe nag usap yung dalawang magkakampe. Both of them paying attention to Stan Hardinger. And, and that's just the kind of attention that Stan Hardinger demands from the defense. Yes, and Pugoy uh, was really hoping that Kelly Williams would switch. But Kelly, knowing his mental aptitude, did not want to allow Pugoy to guard Stan Pringle in the post. Unfortunately, they left LA Tenori wide open for a jumper. Easy basket for Joe Devan. As the referee is not biting on the flop from Glenn Cobuntin. And it's something that we saw in the game between the Meralco Bulls and the NX Road Warriors in our earlier game. Referees not willing to call offensive fouls unless they are really obvious. Oh yes, and uh, JDV playing on extent, extended minutes mm -hmm. towards the end of the elimination round. And now he's slowly getting in shape. Coach Tim has so much confidence in JDV that he actually allows him to play over 35 minutes per ballgame. Our Arpa boy posting up against Chan. Nothing there. 45 seconds remaining to think first quarter. The event is joined by Chan, Mariano, Tenorio, and Stan Hardinger. The event posting up against a smaller defender, draws a foul. Two free throws coming up for Joe. So you look at it, it is gut feel for JDV. It feels like on two aspects, height and thickness, he has the advantage against Cabuntin. Of course, not to mention the number of experience and championship rings that he has tucked under his belt. So uh, JDV, usually a facilitator when he comes in, but he knows that uh, Stan Pringle is, is on the bench right now, not enough scoring options for their team. He's taking it upon himself to be a scoring option for Barangay. And there is the adjustment coming from Coach Chot Reyes. Exactly what you were saying, Coach, instead of Glenn Cobuntin, a smaller defender, he puts into the game. Dave Marcelo, another off-season pickup. These are free agent signings. 
you know, Brian Eruela, Glenn Cobuntin, Dave Marcelo, they, these weren't trades. They were released by their former teams and scooped up by Coach Chuck. Oh, yes. And uh, just knowing that uh, these players would fit in nicely in the kind of game that they want to play. Marcelo, for example, packs himself with uh, so much physicality. He can stay with anybody on a single coverage. Scrambling defense coming from TNT. Uh, they finally send it to their side of the basketball court. No fouls remaining. Eight seconds on the shot clock for Barangay Ginebra. Tenorio goes to Devan. Three seconds to shoot. Basket won't work. There's a foul down low. Contra Kai RR Pogoy. That means two more free throws for Barangay Ginebra. An unproductive bus. A thrust there on the initial attempt by Barangay Ginebra. But one thing going right for them is they got Tropang Giga into early foul trouble. That's why they're shooting free throws again. And using his strength to elude the defense of uh, Jeff Chan was RR Pogoy. He has not gotten shots off consistently from the three. He has not made a three-pointer uh, here in this first quarter. But you know it's just a matter of time. Coach, that's two generations of FEU Tamaraos going at it, no? RR Pogoy and, and Jeff Chan. I believe in terms of just universities, mm -hmm. FEU pinakamaraming oh, players in the PBA right now. Yes. Uh, and uh, the, the best and, and the brightest, uh, even uh, at his advanced age. And I'll, I'll put him in a, the best 40 category. And I'm talking about the Arwin Santos. Reynal Hugnatan should also be there <laughs> in that conversation. 21 to 17. 20 pounds like the Ganyani. Aljon Mariano, his second free throw is a miss. Rebound picked up by RR Pogoy. Two seconds to shoot. Pogoy, does he know? He did. Unfortunately, he mishandled the dribble. So at the end of the first quarter of action, it is the eighth-seeded Barangay Ginebra San Miguel holding a four-point lead against the TNT Tropangiga 21-17 heading into the second quarter of action. Barangay Ginebra is attempting to become the lowest seeded defending champion to successfully retain its title. In terms of the lowest seeded, it was SMB in the 2019 Philippine Cup. And Toyota, which is also number five in the 1982 Open Conference. An eighth seed defending its title has never happened. And it's, it's for good reason. Because it's really the best team as the number one team. Yes. And... Uh... It's just amazing that Barangay Hinebra is still playing at this point. Again, they lost Chapit Aguilar early in the elimination round. And towards the end, their best all-around player in Scotty Thompson also missed a lot of games. In fact, Scotty is not uh, suited in today's ball game. But still, Barangay Hinebra comfortably on top by four points at the end of 12 minutes. Welcome to the second quarter of action as we thank you once again for joining us on PBA Rush. Carlo Pamituan with Coach Ryan Gregorio on the call. Babalik sila sa poste. Jody Vance versus Dave Marcelo. And there's a foul hold against RR Pogoy, it looks like. And now, look at the intelligence of JDV because he knows that he cannot back down Marcelo because Marcelo is heavier. What is looking for are the cutters from the weak side. So Tropangiga must make sure that they have that manual ball principle will not allow offside cuts to go past them and limit their fouling because that is where Barangay Ginebra had a lot of mileage, free throw shooting because TNT was in early foul trouble. 
Bounce pass. Williams to Williams. The extra pass. Hindi handa. Itong si Dave Marcelo. That's another TNT turnover. Tenorio attacking the shaded area. Poor spacing there. Prince Capiral should not have been in that situation as it basically forced Eli Tenorio out of bounds. Unproductive thrust there for Barangay Henebra. Capiral should be a floor spacer with this kind of a lineup so that L.A. Tenorio can get to the basket with so much space in the paint. Second effort is good for Dave Marcelo as he cuts their deficit down to just two points, 21 to 19. So slowly but surely playing with more stability is TNT. They're not just launching shots from the three-point area. They're going for higher percentage shots and short rebounds. Because if it is a long shot, chances are it's a long rebound. And Barangay Hinebra was quick enough to get those defensive boards. And again, JDV having a miserable time now backing down Marcelo yeah. because of Marcelo's weight. Look at this drive coming from Pogoy. But poor effort coming from Prince Caperal to try and box out Marcelo. L.A. Tenorio just managed to get in. However, it will be a completed stop for TNT. Mikey Williams attacking, losing the ball. It will go to Barangay Ginebra. Turnover against Williams. Oh, very quiet uh, day here for Mikey Williams. Ten minutes of basketball action, still zero to show. Although he was able to grab three rebounds in the first quarter. Yung last na attack niya, coach, gigil na eh, no? Because he can't seem to get his offense going. Yes, and the, if he just saw that there were four white shirts manning the paint and defending the interior, it would have been a better option for him to just slow down and let the offense materialize. Now a foul is whistled against Mikey. But you have to give him some sort of leeway because even if he is uh, an older rookie, this is still his first ever PBA playoff game. Yes, and so you, you know that uh, he is averaging close to 20 points per ball game, 18.4 points per game to be exact. But if you have that many points to show in the elimination round, you expect your opponent to scout you and to play your tendencies and just to limit your touches and scoring options. And that is what Hinebra has done tremendously here in this ballgame. Two good free throws for Jeff Chan. The low scoring ball game between TNT and Barangay Hinebra. And off to RR Pogoy against Chan. The blur now. Attacks middle. Kick out pass to Williams. Back to Pogoy. Great defense so far for Barangay Hinebra. Hindi makahanap ng butas ang TNT. Kelly Williams has to pull the trigger. He misses. And that is a shot that you'd live with if you're the Barangay Hinebra defense. And yes, and for Coach Tim Cohn, he's really picking his poison. He's clogging the paint right now. Stan Hardinger will always be the secondary line of defense, especially when Jason Castro and the guards are attacking. And that will leave Kelly Williams wide open in the corner, and they're taking their chances. R.R. Pogoy attacks baseline, kick out pass. Mikey Williams wide open. Still nothing in this ball game for Mikey. Another foul will be called here against the TNT Tropagiga. Their third team foul. Fresh cards on the floor for Coach Chot Reyes, Ryan Reyes, and Brian Eruela will enter the ball game. So for Barangay Hinebra, it's Tenorio Caperal Chan, Stan Hardinger, and MJ Ayaay. Another pickup for Barangay Hinebra. As he was left unsigned by the Alaska Aces in the offseason. Chan kicks it out. Caperal for three. No good. Too strong. Oh, but the ball will stay on the side of Barangay Hinebra. Fresh 14 on the shot lock for the Kings. Tenorio against Eruela. LA attacks. Midrange jumper is good. Multiple possessions for Barangay Hinebra. Finally, LA Tenorio getting that shot off to increase the lead of Barangay to six points. The lead was at seven at its biggest in the first quarter. Barangay Hinebra slowly rebuilding here. And it has been a miserable day from the field. 
misconnection there between the two veterans as the alley of play will lead to a turnover. Only 29% from the field for TNT, 7 out of 24. And uh, again, sensing that he has the advantage against his defender. L.A. Tenorio lulled his defender to sleep. He made that quick crossover action and a floater. And look at the turnovers, TNT with seven, Barangay Ginebra with six. But the biggest problem for TNT right now is their inability to shoot from the three-point area. Only one out of 12 for 8%. Timely basket, as if on cue, Mikey Williams getting that shot off with a tiny opening to push TNT to 22 points and just down by three against Barangay. First basket of the ball game for Mikey Williams. He is one of five from the field. Now defending MJ Ayai, Caperal hands it off to, Stan, to Stanley Pringle. Good pass down low, Prince Caperal, short arms the banker. Gang rebounding all TNT Tropangiga players in that shaded area to try and prevent Stan Hardinger from getting an offensive rebound. Good gang, uh, gang rebounding, but offensive foul will be called against Brian Aruela. Missed opportunity once again for Tropangiga. And look at that, he was trying to set up Mikey Williams. Oh, this was the, the shot prior, that, that extra pass. Always a nice uh, offensive system to show. Moving the ball from left to right. Touch passing done there by Tropangiga. And Brian Reyes, the veteran, knowing that they need the scoring output of Mikey Williams, was just a willing passer in that possession. Jared Dillinger, elbow jumper, won't work. Another rebound for Mikey Williams, his fifth of the ball game. Again, Coach Tim Cohn, lagging mas malaki yung defender contra kay Mikey as Jared Dillinger on him. Ryan Reyes, open three, nothing there. But that's his specialty. You cannot fall asleep on the ball with <laughs> yes. Ryan Reyes lurking and then he issues a nice pass to Troy Rosario. A completed play, a steal by uh, Ryan Reyes, keeping the ball alive and giving them another opportunity to score. And from the weak side, Troy Rosario attacking with practice abandon, scoring uh, another basket and don't look now. Barangay Hinebra is only protecting a one-point advantage. Staggered screens for kay Tenorio. Big man on him now, LA trying to use his speed. Tenorio, tough shot, tough angle as TNT will try to shoot for the lead here. Mikey Williams attacks middle, layup is good, and TNT has the lead. And credit have that basket to the screen of Troy Rosario. And that enabled Mikey Williams to score on an easy layup. Look at that, the, the helper was supposed to be Stan Pringle. And because of that screen, Mikey Williams was able to score another basket for a total of five points across his name. This time out is brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. TNT of 26-25. Back inside the Don Honorio Ventura State University gym in Bacolor, Pampanga. 26 to 25 is the count. Carlo Pamintuan and coach Ryan Gregorio on the call. We're currently on a 7 to nothing run for the TNT Tropangiga as they have taken the lead against Barangay Ginebra. Good response from Jared Dillinger. Oh yes, and great timeout. Good call by coach Tim Cohn because the momentum was already on the side of Tropangiga. So that timeout stopped the momentum a little bit got them into their offensive play wherein uh, they wanted a shot close to the basket and Jared Dillinger was able to score his fourth point at the ballgame. 
Mikey Williams testing the defense of Jared. 10 seconds remaining in the shot clock for TNT. They go to Brian Eruela for three. That's good. Oh, just critical basket shot there by Brian Eruela. And these are the, the guards that Coach Chotreas are really expecting to hound Stan Pringle together with Kip Montalbo. And it's just great lift for these two guards who also join in the scoring parade. Pringle gets the switch, big man on him. Stan the man with a drive. And there's a foul against Brian Ruela as he was trying to fight for a position against the bigger Aljun Mariano. 14 foul of TNT. Barangay Ginebra has yet to commit a single foul here in the second quarter. Another guy who was able to fight for a roster spot for Tropang Giga, and not only that, he's actually part of the rotation. He's playing significant minutes. There was a game wherein he scored uh, more than 10 points, and uh, that was, again, a huge lift because uh, there, there will be games wherein the usual scorers will struggle from the field. And Brian Arvela, a guy who can score and can defend. He's painful, meaning because of his toughness, and his defensive presence, look at that. Stan Pringle had a hard time scoring against him. Eruela attacking middle. Good pass. But Rosario overshot the mark, got it right back as he adds on to their advantage. Now the biggest lead of the of the ball game for TNT at four. And this is where the legs, you're seeing it now. Multiple attempts and a lot of uh, extra jump there for Tropangiga and Troy Rosario. So with the multiple attempts, that means better chances for them to score. On the other hand, Stan Pringle trying to attack the defense of Brian Haruela, but it was foiled. Many chances, a lot of black shirts in the paint, and Troy Rosario finally nailing a close uh, shot. And TNT, after being down by as big as seven points in the earlier minutes of this ball game, is now enjoying a four-point advantage. There's a switch now, Mikey Williams versus Pringle. Ikot ng bola ang TNT. They give it to Marcelo. Dave, kick out pass. Rosario misses once again from deep. But Aljon Mariano could not handle the rebound. Ball will stay on the side of the, of the Tropangiga. Timeout coming up here, requested by the TNT Tropangiga. They have turned a seven-point disadvantage to a four-point lead. Less than four minutes remaining here in the second quarter. An 11-point turnaround so far in favor of the TNT Tropang Giga against Barangay Ginebra, San Miguel. As we welcome you back to the Don Honoro Ventura State University Gym in Bacolor, Pampanga. Carlo Pamintuan with Coach Ryan Gregorio on the call. TNT, the number one seed, has a twice-to-beat advantage against Barangay Ginebra. As you can see, teams at number four, five, three, and six. They're engaged in a best of three with SMB and Magnolia picking up the first wins of those quarterfinal pairings. Quick trigger, Rosario finally gets a bucket from the outside. It was a turn of Tropangiga to call a timeout and Coach, Coach Chotreas was able to design a play to free up Troy Rosario in the deep corner and was able to nail one. Put on the line for Rosario, so only a long two for a six-point TNT lead. Stan Hardinger had the ball swiped by Ryan Reyes, who has been so active on defense. Quick forward pass, Rosario with a slam. 
Or the onslaught continues right now. Playing with so much energy, diving for loose balls, getting that possession because of that dive was Ryan Reyes. And that resulted to easy two points for them. We've talked about bench depth, and you're seeing it at this point. Barangay Ginebra probably are losing some of their legs right now because TNT is faster on the ball. Looks like Aljon Mariano also rolled his ankle with that last dive for the loose ball. Troy Rosario with a two-handed throwdown. Look at the effort, the aggression, the intensity coming from the veteran Ryan Reyes leading to a fast break opportunity for TNT. And we talked about this coach in the last game in the elimination round between these two. It was defined by the defense of the Tropangiga. And that is exactly what we're seeing right now. 35 to 27 advantage for them. But what is so significant is the second quarter play for TNT. 18 points for them while limiting Barangay Hinebra to only six points. Now the question is, where are they going to ma manufacture their points? Stan Pringle has not done so well offensively with only two points. L.A. Tenori with four points and Stan Hardinger with only five points. And just to add more problems for them, we saw that Aljun Mariano was injured in that possession. So the question now is, one, can he come back into this ball game? Two, if he can't, who will step up from this already hampered rotation? Walang Jabet Aguilar, walang Scotty Thompson. Uh, Stanley Pringle comes up empty. Chance now for TNT to build a double-digit advantage against Barangay Ginebra. Mikey Williams against Jared Dillinger. Hook pass, extra pass to the corner. Rosario misses from deep. As he continues, come up empty from long range. Stan Hardinger, hindi pa nabibigyan ng bola in the last few possessions for Barangay Ginebra. He's asking for it down low against Marcelo. But the wide-bodied defender preventing that from happening. Hand off to Pringle. Spin move, kick out pass. Great defense so far from TNT up until that last moment when Eruela was called for the foul on the shot. Oh, lucky break there for LA Tenorio and Barangay Ginebra. Brian Eruela felt like he hit nothing but the ball. But unfortunately, the call will stay. A defensive foul will be called against Brian Eruela. So two free throws will be awarded to LA Tenorio. Badly needed baskets here for LA Tenorio because uh, the scoring for Barangay Ginebra has basically stopped, especially in the last four minutes. It has been an 18-6 to quarter in favor of TNT here in the second. And you understand the frustration of Brian Arruela, coach, because for 22 seconds, ang ganda ng rotation, ang ganda ng ball denial nila up until that last moment. Yes, and uh, he's frustrated. Uh, he is an energy guy, and... Uh, Great things happened as soon as he was inserted in the basketball uh, court for Coach Chot Reyes. So you know that he wants to stay and play a little longer. So there is such a thing as plus-minus. And the plus or the player efficiency rating of Brian Eruela was definitely evident because they were down by as big as seven points at one point. And now they're enjoying a seven-point seven advantage. And during that time, Brian Eruela was in the basketball court. You are definitely correct, Coach Brian Ruela. Same with Ryan Reyes. Our plus 12s in this ball game. Ruela plus 12 in only six and a half minutes of action. So instant, immediate, and forceful impact coming from Brian. And what is so amazing is that you have that the stats in front of you. And I was just relying on my uh, basketball understanding <laughs> and my memory. I, I, I need my código, <laughs> coach. I, I need my I need my kokopyahan. <laughs> Fresh 14 on the shot clock for TNT Tropangiga. LA Tenorio, we've been watching his minutes throughout the conference. He has played the most number of minutes for Barangay Ginebra. Mikey Williams responds with a mid-range jumper on the other side. Oh, the Mikey dance. He was just floating, uh, trying to get a tiny opening by eluding whatever defensive tentacles there was in front of him. Count another two points for Mikey Williams for a total of seven in this ballgame. TNT scrambling on defense. They recover. Almost, and then they get a steal. R.R. Pogoy leading the break for the Tropangiga. Mikey Williams, corner pocket, three ball, no good. Rebound, Jody Van. 
Elite Norio will slow things down just a little bit for Barangay Ginebra, asking for a high ball screen. And a poor foul coming from Mikey as they're already in the penalty situation. He will send Stan Hardinger to the stripe for two. Again, checking the minutes, L.A. Tenorio already dealing with 20. On the other side, the top minute getter is Mikey Williams with 18. See Jason Castro only 10 minutes off the bench for Coach John Reyes so far. And I was consciously watching it because from the get-go, the pace of Barangay Ginebra was just so fast. And yeah. I thought uh, if they could not sustain this kind of an effort, then because of the rotation of ENT and the depth that they have, which is a stark advantage against Barangay Ginebra, there might be a point in the game where in Barangay Ginebra might lose steam. This is still early in the ball game. We're not even in the second half. But you were seeing it right now, Barangay Ginebra struggling a little bit in the second quarter with only 10 points to show while allowing TNT to score 20. L.A. Tenorio could not understand why he was called for a personal foul. <clears throat> Check this out one more time. Ooh, tough call to make, coach. Yeah, the first one probably, yeah. yes. The second one, I don't think uh, there was uh, contact on L.A. Tenorio. He was trying to hold on to R.R. Pugoy when R.R. Pugoy was trying to cut the corner and using that ball screen. But it was not called there. It was called in the second one. It was R.R. Pugoy who initiated that contact, but it's just a huge break for this guy. This Ibuano kid obviously is playing stable basketball here for TNT, and you just don't give him two open shots because chances are he's going to make those two free throws because he is an 80% shooter from the free throw line. Kaya nga nanghihinayang si LA coach kasi sana yung unang foul na lang yung tinawag, <laughs> hindi, hindi sana free throws Correct. eh. Good press break from Barangay Ginebra but they do not find an advantage. Yeah, foul on Dave Marcelo. Masyadong malalim na yung naging pwesto ni Stan Hardinger. So he will instead send Christian to the strike for two. Another showcase from the free throw line using his left hand. Three or four so far in yes, this game. Yes, and I'm still having a hard time adjusting to this kind of a free throw shooting, but whatever works. As far as he's concerned, he's happy with his 54% shooting from the line. He missed the first one, but uh, you know that if you practice it day in and day out, you get confident, and the next conference is going to shoot for like an aim as a goal, shoot probably like 62%, then there is already progress. He takes care of the second free throw. As TNT goes to Rosario now. 14 seconds in the shot clock. Bogoy with a big on him. Goes to Marcelo. Might be a foul against Tenorio. As he was caught in a cross match trying to defend Rosario down low. He had no choice. He was like one foot uh, shorter than uh, Troy Rosario. And Troy Rosario is in no man's land. But he made sure that it's not going to be in the act of shooting. They are not yet in team penalty. So just a sideline out-of-bounds play for Tropangiga. Seven-point lead for the TNT Tropangiga. Mikey Williams dancing against Jared Dillinger. Mikey, step back three. No good. Everything but the shot there for Williams. Oh, Tenorio with the escape. Lefty layup won't work, though. Scramble for the loose ball. Picked up by Barangay Ginebra. Still a scramble and a foul. Loose ball foul against Jason Castro. The foul was already whistled. Of course, Jason Castro might be spending a lot of energy there trying to argue that goal. Unfortunately, it's not going to change. But look at the way Barangay Ginebra and also players from TNT yeah. go for that loose ball. And it's just unfortunate that the foul was called against Jason Castro, but it is always nice to see players, PBA players, diving for loose balls. It's just so different playing in the playoffs and watching these players dive for extra possessions. And unfortunately, 
Stan Pringle missing his first free throw. At saka yung nagda-dive coach Ryan, lahat, hindi lang bata. Correct. Eh, pati veterano, yes. Ryan Reyes, Joe Devant, Christian Stan Hardinger, all diving for loose balls, which just shows you how important this game is to them. I mean, if you're TNT, ayaw mo nang bigyan ng pagkakataon. A team as good as Barangay Ginebra, you do not want them to have another shot to knock you out. Oh, you cannot play with fire uh, because if you lose a twice to beat advantage, even the first one, of course, you work so hard to gain that advantage. But you lose one, all of a sudden you lose it. So now, this is exactly the situation that Beralco Bolts uh, are in. It's going to be a knockout game, even if they're 9-2 and two, after losing against uh, and Lex in the first game, then they have no choice but to go for that knockout win on Friday. Similar with the TNT, they ended the elimination round at 10 and 1, so they want to finish off this ball game. But in reality, there's a financial component, you know that, Carlo, that's yes. entering semifinals bonus mm -hmm. for these players if they just win their quarterfinals matchup. So, yung mga pamilya ng mga players are missing them, but they don't want to see them just yet. Exactly. Stay inside the bubble. Exactly. Come home with more money. Tell me, let's put on the table and better Christmas for these players and their family members. <laughs> of course, we all know that, you know, it's not just the players sacrificing to be in the bubble, it's, it's their families as well because their wives will have to deal with the homeschooling of the children, will have to be in charge of the household. So it's, it's a sacrifice, not just by the, the people who are playing and coaching, but just everyone related, everyone involved in the PBA. Of course, it's a much better situation now because of the advent of technology. Yeah. There's Zoom call, there is MS Teams, there's Viber, there's, there's everything else. And uh, with that use, uh, you can see your children at a much... Uh, frequent time. Oh, mas even, di ba? Yes. Pati yung uh, asawa mo, at least, uh, nandun lang. Kitang-kita mo sila. Isang madalas. Two fouls to give up here for Barangay Ginebra. Kaya pumasok sila MJ Ayaay. At Kent Salado is in the ballgame, but they force a turnover. Kent Salado attacking. Missing with the layup. Pogoy with the rebound, but with two seconds remaining. Looks like TNT will not be able to pick up another basket at the end of this first half of action. Barangay Ginebra led by as many as seven points early, but TNT turned things around. Our player of the half is brought to you by Firefly, the trusted lighting partner by the PBA, and we selected Troy Rosario. He struggled from downtown in the early goings, but because of his effort, he has allowed TNT not just to come back in this ball game, but to take the lead heading into the second half of action. He was part of that crew that made this run, especially towards the last part of the second quarter. Troy Rosario was simply all over the place. He was shooting from the perimeter. He was cutting from the weak side. He was the first one down low for fast break opportunities and eight total points for Big Troy. And because of that, TNT Tropangiga will be holding on to a 39 to 33 advantage against Barangay Ginebra San Miguel heading into our halftime break. At the half, the number one seeded team at the end of the elimination round, TNT Tropangiga holding a six point advantage against the eighth seed and defending champion, Barangay Ginebra San Miguel. We thank you for joining us on PBA Rush and on streaming on Fo Smart Sports. Carlo Pamintuan and Coach Ryan Gregorio on the call. And Coach, the first quarter, we saw Barangay Ginebra really pushing the pace, staying active, and staying ahead of TNT. Oh, the first quarter was totally dominated by Barangay Ginebra. What they wanted to do, they were able to do. They were getting a lot of points inside the paint. They had the energy to go for second chance opportunities. Capiral was uh, able to score two points. It was a very slow start from Tropangiga. Kim Montalbo scoring the first basket here for Tropangiga. But again, Barangay Ginebra just seeing some tiny openings against the defense of Tropangiga. And they were just so happy to pounce on it. But in the second quarter, the tide started to shift in favor of TNT with Mikey Williams hitting his first three-point basket of the ball game. Good moment still coming from the other guys of Barangay Ginebra. By other, we mean not Stan Hardinger, Tenorio, or Pringle. But the effort on the secondary opportunities for Troy Rosario and the rest of TNT working out in their favor. 
and the effort as well, forcing turnovers, forcing steals, and getting fast break opportunities. In the middle of the second quarter, Ginebra was still on top by seven points. But the shock troopers, and I was mentioning this during our coverage, Arvela Ryan Reyes ignited the scoring onslaught for Tropang Giga. And that is why they ended the first half with a six-point advantage. And look at the shooting, especially from the three-point area. Three out of 19 for 15% from Tropang Giga and zero out of five so far for Barangay Ginebra. Second chance points again. Lording it over is Tropang Giga with 11 as compared to only six for Barangay. Even points off the turnovers, fast break points as well, six to zero for Tropang Giga. And our leading scorers, Troy Rosario with eight points. Mikey Williams silent in the first quarter, but erupting for seven points in the second quarter for a total of uh, that output. Montalbo with five, Pugoy and Jason Katzer with four. On the other side, Stan Hardinger with nine points, Eli Tinorio with six. Jared Dillinger together with Prince Caperal with four points, Joe Devance with three points, and missing in the top five scores of Barangay Hinebra is Stan Pringle, who has only shown two points so far in this ballgame. Halftime stats are brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. So the three point woes continue for Barangay Hinebra against the defense of TNT in their elimination round meeting. Coach, they were one of 16, now zero of five. And it's not by accident that Barangay Ginebra is really struggling from the three-point area. The defense of TNT is extended in such a way that they're not allowing shots from deep. So this is what I always say. Every time you're up against a team that scores so well from the outside, L.A. Tenorio can erupt, Stan Pringle can erupt. All you need to do as a guard is step on the white line so that they are forced to be an attacker rather than a comfortable shooter from the three-point area. And speaking of attacker, an attack coming from Kim Montalbo open to scoring here in the second half. As that is a positioning foul. Tagged on Kelly Williams, Montalbo has been scoring well in this ball game. Seven points in the ball game, a perfect three of three from the field. And what is amazing is his ability to stop the guards, particularly Stan Pringle. A lot of players are rotating, and uh, that is making it harder for Stan Pringle to read his defenders because defenders have different tendencies. So sometimes it's Kip Montalbo. Once in a while, it's R.R. Pogoy. Brian Arruella comes in, it has to be Brian Arruella who he has to contend against. Jason Castro on switches, he also have to score again. So those players are just giving different looks defensively, and Stan Pringle is having a hard time reading those uh, defenders. Oh, steal here for RR Pogoy. And a duty foul given up by Christian Stan Hardinger to prevent that fast break opportunity. So again, Staying true to the theme of their elimination round battle. TNT getting steals, getting opportunities to score easy baskets on the other side. And expect Tropang Giga to run Barangay Ginebra to the ground. Now that they feel like they have better or fresher legs, and I've been pointing this out at the start of our coverage, the rotation is simply too limited for Barangay Ginebra. And time and again, if the tempo of the ball game is fast, then the advantage will be to Tropa, Tropa Giga's side. Comfortable shot there coming from Troy Rosario as he has no problem towering over Eli Tenorio. Big collision in the backcourt between Pogoy and Caperal as TNT recovers on defense. Same starting unit. Oh, hard foul coming from Kim Montalbo. There might be a review here because that was a hard foul coming from the guard. Well, something that our referees will review. But pinpoint assist passing. Look at LA Tenorio. Just looking for that tiny opening on that slip. And it could have been an easy shot there for uh, Stan Hardinger, but the smaller defender not giving up an end one play. But again, the referees will review it, whether it will merit a flagrant foul one, because Kib Montalbo was not really going for the ball. You know, for Kib Montalbo, naiintindihan mo rin na kailangan niya talagang lakasan because of how strong Christian is in that a uh, uh, foul that's not hard enough would allow an, an N1 opportunity, perhaps? Yes, so flagrant foul was called against Kib Montalbo. And Kib Montalbo has to sit out for three minutes after that foul. But what, what he was trying is just making sure that there will be a, no N1 
opportunity there for uh, Stan Hardinger. But unfortunately, because of the height disparity, it seemed like he was just after the man and not after the ball. Parang yung mga foul ng Gilas Pilipinas women nag exactly. China coach. <laughs> I was about to say that too. What can you do? You are 5'3". And I can relate to it. And you're up against a 6'9 player. Even if you're going for the ball, you simply could not reach it. You eh. cannot. Yes. Meanwhile, Christian Stan Harding are taking care of the first. Missing the second. And Japet Aguilar continues to sit on their bench. Lagging naka uniform itong si Japet Aguilar, even though his, he knows that it, it would take him a long, longer time to recover from the strained MCL. He still puts on the uniform. But at least we're not seeing him wearing the knee brace anymore. So he might be feeling a little bit better at this stage as Pringle goes for the one-hander, gets the bounce. And finally, was able to elude the defense of Brian Arvella. Only the fourth basket for Stan Pringle, and you expect that it's not going to be the last. Brian Arvella comes into the game para palitan dito si Kip Montalvo. Hand off from Mikey Williams in defense. A little too sticky from Jared Dillinger. And that is the kind of defense that you're trying to do against the Mikey Williams. Play defense before he even gets the ball. And this is a patented move for Stan Pringle, doing that half uh, step and a shot of floater, which is definitely hard to guard. Oh, good pass as Kelly Williams is wide open down low. Unselfish play that time around, sensing that he has two defenders that he had to, to go up against Roy Rosario, getting that opening to issue a timely assist pass to the wide open Kelly Williams. Prince Caperal open, nothing there, rebound Mikey. Blocking foul against L.A. Tenorio. Now defensively, Capiral is a marked man. You see the players rushing out and closing out long against Capiral simply because of his performance against uh, Phoenix. And I thought uh, probably very close to a backing violation for TNT. With, with the old rules, Coach, it would have been a clear backing violation, but now it is... Ball and both feet into the I, I, I think so, stage. yes. That's why I doubted also because the ball did not cross the half court line. Offensive rebound for Stan Hardinger. And then he attacks immediately. Defense all over him. Not a problem. Pinang paglang ni Christian yung defense ni Kelly Williams. Uh, just too strong using his uh, arm uh, to get a tiny advantage with that space. And he was able to finish that layup. You no, know, for Christian, it looks out of control until it's not, until he's making the basket already. And who cares about form for as long as you're effective? And Stan Hardinger, sometimes it looks awkward, but it counts for two points, so you forget about uh, style points for as long as you get another two points across Great your name. Setup job coming from Mikey Williams, but Fogoy misses. One more try from downtown, he will make the second one. And look at how tired Jared Dillinger was after that play. Clutching on to his knees and even Stan Pringle. So dito na papasok, like what we've discussed earlier, fatigue factor will be very material in the success metric of Barangay Hinep. Pringle for three, counter, no good. Another rebound for Mikey and TNT will push again. Williams attacking, draws the foul from Jared just to give, give himself a breather at this stage. For this, RR Pogoy is a great shooter. He can miss, but if you give him two open opportunities, chances are he will drill it the second time around. And he was just so happy after nailing that basket. He's been aching to get his accuracy from the three-point area back to normal numbers. He is just 28% from the three-point range in this conference. So he is hoping that he would go at least 35, 37% come playoffs time. Or he can do this and just take it strong to the hoop against the defense of Jeff Chan, who has just checked into the ball game. Doesn't point lead now for the TNT Tropangiga, their biggest lead of the ball game. This time out is brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA.
TNT, Tropang Giga starting to flex at this stage of the third quarter, building a dozen point lead against Barangay Ginebra San Miguel. This was our championship matchup in the 2020 Philippine Cup inside the PBA bubble. But now these two teams are meeting in the quarterfinals with the Tropangiga holding a twice the piece advantage. Carlo Pomituan and Coach Ryan Gregorio on the call for PBA Rush. A dangerous moment here for Barangay Ginebra. And that forced the hand of Coach Tim Cohn to call a timeout. Otter Pogoy is starting to heat up. And more than that, TNT is now up their biggest lead in the ball game. 50 to 38, a 12 point advantage for them. And the Stan Pringle is obviously all tuckered out. And that is why he was given a rest by Coach Tim Cohn. Another steal here for TNT, and they will go on the run again. Jason Castro to the corner. Mikey Williams unfortunately stepped out of bounds. Toe on the line there as they will waste an opportunity to add to this 12-point lead. Now, if you're Barangay Ginebra, you would still applaud the effort of your players because it seems like they're losing the uh, right passes on offense. They've been turning the ball a lot of times. But what is nice is they're quick on the draw, trying to stop fast break opportunities. And now they stopped the fast break attack from Tropangiga and they were able to score on the other side to cut the deficit down to just 10 points. Castro now using the Kelly Williams screen, locating Mikey. Mikey creates a separation, the jumper won't work. That goes to Jeff Chan. Rangay Ginebra is not out of this just yet. Still a lot of time remaining. It only takes one big run for them to get back. And that will certainly help back-to-back -back baskets coming from the big men. So four points in a row here for Barangay Ginebra. Trying to keep the score a little closer. The timeout was critical because it was dangerous time for Barangay Ginebra, especially the momentum was obviously on the side of Tropangiga. So after that timeout, they were able to uh, score four straight baskets. The first one was this easy basket by Stan Hardinger and another one here off the cut from the weak side. A nonchalant shot from the perimeter for JDV. So on both occasions, Stan Hardinger was part of the offensive play. RR Pogoy has been aggressive here in the third quarter. Misses that one with Chan picking up another board. Another chance for Barangay Ginebra to inch closer in this ball game. Ayai was hacked, fouled, and he will take two. Just chip away. That is what Barangay Ginebra is trying to do here. Focusing on one stop, they were able to make three successive stops. And now an opportunity for them to score on three straight plays to further cut the uh, advantage of uh, TNT to manageable levels. But we have been carefully monitoring the minutes of Barangay Ginebra. Ten Hardinger at 27 minutes, Tenorio at 28. Earlier, Coach, in our graphic in the pregame, we compared the statistics of Jason Castro and LA Tenorio side by side. And Tenorio, who is a year older, is playing 15 more minutes on a game-to-game -game basis compared to Jason Castro. And that is just too much. Uh, we know that L.A. Tenorio is the Iron Man in the PBA. And his mileage is like, uh, uh, if, if you compare it to, to a car, probably 200,000 uh, mileage already. <laughs> well, the average is like 40, 50,000. But uh, this man of steel is just so impressive. You simply will just admire his work ethic. And uh, that is why he is still in the PBA as uh, one of the greatest superstars to ever play the game. And the pasa mula kay Mikey Williams, JB Aram hacked across the face, draws a foul and converts for this N1 opportunity. And we've been talking about this, uh, the depth of TNT. Look at that, not even breaking a sweat, Aram, because uh, Kelly Williams yeah. is playing good basketball, Marcelo also significantly well and Aram comes in while Sand Hardinger has played more than 20 minutes in the game and even JDV so an, an added the weapon here for Tropangiga. Oh Ryan Reyes is fouled 
And he will take two free throws. Yung dagdag na problema pa, Coach Ryan, was that Aljon Mariano suffered a sprained ankle, it looks like, in the second quarter. We have not seen him yet here in the third. So it's a big question mark if he can still come back into this ball game to try and help Barangay Hinebra stay alive. Now we're not just so used to seeing Barangay Hinebra fighting for uh, the eighth slot. Usually there will be in the middle pack or sometimes even uh, having that uh, opportunity to gain the twi twice to beat advantage. But you still have to admire the never say die attitude of this team. No Japa Tagular for much of the time. No Scotty Thompson uh, probably in the last three or four games. And yet they are still fighting here in this conference. And th that is just a tribute to the culture that Barangay Hinebra has uh, placed themselves in. And th that is why a lot of people are just so enamored by, by the, the kind of uh, play that Barangay Hinebra does. TNT all complaining <laughs> that the ball should be on their side. But it looks like it was decided that it would stay as Barangay Hinebra basketball. Ten seconds on the shot clock, though, for Hinebra. Pringle splits a double. Stand the man, attacks, and explodes at the cup. He needed that two-minute break to get his legs back. Back down to an eight-point advantage. Rosario kicks it out to Castro. Jason, the extra pass to Ryan Reyes. Nothing happening yet on offense. JP Eram attacks inside. Tough shot. Does not make it. Great defense being employed by Barangay Hinebra in that play. Christian goes to the spin cycle. No good on the shot. Rebound Castro. You can see the pace again. TNT trying to play faster at this stage. Good swipe coming from Joe DeVance. Could not stop JP Eram the second time around. So not giving up on that possession was JP Eram. And just making sure that even if he fails in the first one, he will not be denied and he was able to score on the second attempt. Barangay Hinebra requesting a 30 second timeout as they find themselves down by 10. Coach, we know that 10 points is something that Barangay Hinebra can chip away at for the rest of this quarter. But to be able to come back against TNT and complete the comeback will take a lot of energy coming from Barangay Hinebra. We go back to the question, will they have enough legs to pull this one out? Uh, uh, when, when you talk about uh, their backs against the wall, uh, obviously they are compelled push themselves a little harder, dive for more possessions, for extra possessions for them, or dive for opportunities for, for them to have uh, multiple chances to score. But what they need to do as a unit right now is shoot better from the three-point area. They're zero out of eight from the, from the three-point range. And uh, that is the difference in the ball game. Uh, even if TNT percentage-wise, they're not good. 17% only, 4 out of 23. But that is 12 extra points from the three-point range for TNT. And that is more or less the advantage that they have. Four minutes remaining in our third quarter. Pringle kicks it out. Ayai, one dribble, pull-up jumper. No go. Castro with the board. Jason, testing if he should attack, picks up his dribble. JP Aram could not locate the ball. Barangay Hinebra has the numbers. Oh, big collision there. As Heruela with a hard fall, but he will pick himself right back up. And send Ayai to the free throw line. Look at that loud thud. Not giving Ayai an easy attempt towards the basket. Brian Heruela challenged him. Him, uh, through and through and for a while uh, I got scared because uh, it was uh, just the, the body of uh, Brian Ruella which hit the floor first but when I saw him like he is okay I looked at the floor whether it's okay and it's still playable remember there was one time 
when he was playing for San Miguel and they would face each other, Tropang Giga against San Miguel in the playoffs. And Jason Castro would be hounded by Chris Ross. Yeah. And Chris Ross would hit the bench for a couple of minutes of rest. And in comes Brian Ruela to hound Jason Castro. And they were so successful with that kind of rotation. So with Brian Ruela out of the way to defend Jason Castro, that gives Jason Castro a lot of openings to score come playoffs time. Yes. Meanwhile, JP Eram having a quarter here in the third as he extends their lead to its largest at 13 points, 59 46. Still here for the blur. Sends it forward to Mikey Williams. Balik kay Jason Castro, who is fouled for two free throws. Now the pace is being dictated by Tropangiga. And fatigue factor right now. The mental mistake will be compounded because of the fatigue factor. So a lot of miscues on passing by uh, Tropangiga and also uh, by uh, Barangay Hinebra, rather, which is being taken advantage of by, Barang by uh, Tropangiga. Uh, so Barangay Hinebra has to slow it down a little bit. Work on their execution. Do not allow TNT to get that ball off steals because chances are Tropangiga will just push the ball. Top players for TNT Tropangiga. Mikey Williams leads them in scoring and assist. He will take a break here. Rosario in the rebounding. Kelly Williams with the steals. JP Aram with the blocks. It speaks of the balance nitong TNT. As Castro splits his free throws. Ball will now go back to Barangay Ginebra, but they need a run here. They need a counter as it has been 21 to 13 here in the third quarter after a 22 to 12 second quarter. Another steal here. Jason Castro hangs in midair and scores off the glass. Just two minute turnovers for Barangay Ginebra and Jason Castro because he did not play a lot of minutes in the first half. You are just showing. You are seeing also uh, the, the kind of uh, stability that he plays and uh, just so much composure every time Jason Castro is in. When his team is down, he knows exactly how to play to keep the score uh, within striking distance. But when his team is up, he's going to step on the gas and score more. You have another timeout on the floor. 62 to 46, the biggest lead of the ball game for the TNT Tropangiga. Quarter action inside the Don Honorio Ventura State University Gym in Bacolor, Pampanga. As we extend our appreciation to Pampanga Governor Delta Pineda for all his help para matuloy ang PBA Philippine Cup in Pampanga, which has been the hotbed of basketball during this pandemic. You know, the PBA bubble, uh, the PBA restart, FIBA basketball, all being played in the province of Pampanga. And we're just so grateful to uh, Governor Pineda because what basketball is doing to, enti to the entire Philippine nation is bring back a little normal. Yeah. You know, mental health has been uh, the biggest topic right now because of the pandemic. And for Filipinos, basketball is part and parcel of our daily grinds. And uh, every time we see the PBA play, it seems like uh, everything is starting to go normal in our surroundings. And speaking of FIBA coach, later on at 12 midnight, Ang ating Gilas Pilipinas women will be seeing action against Chinese Taipei in the FIBA Women's Asia Cup. That is Division A. They will go up against Chinese Taipei later on midnight, airing on One Sports and One Sports Plus. And just to touch on that a little bit, the Samahang Basketball ng Pilipinas is really trying 
to improve uh, women's basketball in our country. We're part of the top eight or eight best in uh, Asia as far as women program is concerned. And uh, we are just up against superpowers like uh, China and Australia. What we're giving is experience to these young ladies for them to compete at the higher level of women's play. Siyempre, hahanda rin sila for the Southeast Asian Games in Vietnam, the Asian Games in, Viet in, in, in China next year. And we're making strides, Carlo. Yeah. Remember, the last time we played here in the Philippines when we hosted the Southeast Asian Games, that was the first time for our Gilas Filipinas women to win the first gold medal in our country. So we just want to sustain uh, progress. At this point, it's hard to gain uh, uh, what you call perfection, but every single time we want to see progress. Muli po, para supportahan ng Gilas Pilipinas women, catch them on action later, 12 midnight against Chinese Taipei. Again, a, a struggle from Barangay Hinebra to score from the three point range as that shot of Joe Devence was erased completely, obliterated by J.P. Aram. Now, let's look at the usual scorers here for Barangay Hinebra. Joe Devance trying to manufacture points inside, but it was not allowed by Poi Aram. The top scorer for Barangay Hinebra, Stan Pringle, with only six points on two out of 11 shooting from the field for 18%. L.A. Tenore is just two out of nine for 22% also with similar output, six points. Even Stan Hardinger, well, he is the best and the brightest spot offensively for Barangay Hinebra with 14 points on a 57% shooting from the field or four out of seven. But the best player in the ball game last time out against Phoenix, Prince Capiral with only four points to show on a two out of seven shooting or 28% from the field goal area. So a lot of the guys are struggling really for Barangay Hinebra. And you could be okay with some players struggling if Stanley Pringle was, you know, his playing his usual game, but we're clearly not seeing that as well, Coach. Oh, you're going to win games if you have two regular scorers. If you're looking at Barangay Hinebra, you expect Stan Gardinger and probably a Stan, of course, a Stan Pringle to be the first uh, option on offense, averaging over 17 points per ball game, and a Stan Hardinger. And the third scorer would like sweeten the pot for you and give you a better chance of winning a particular ball game. But in today's game, it's only Stan Hardinger. The other two scorers, Tenorio and Pringle, they've been stymied by the leech-like defense of Tropangi. Only six points for Tenorio, only six points for Pringle. Combined, they are four of 20 from the field. That's an easy steal for R.R. Pogoy, and he will waltz his way to the cup for two. Now you go back to their first uh, encounter in the elimination round, almost the same refrain. Barangay Hinebra only scoring 67 points, and fast break points, advantage to Tropangiga. And uh, points off the turnovers, also advantage to Tropangiga, but it's not done yet. Points off turnovers, look at that. 22 for Tropangiga and only 10 for Barangay Hinebra. First three-point conversion of the ball game for Barangay Hinebra, courtesy of Jeff Chan. JP Eram, turnaround jumper, nothing there. But the ball will stay with DMD. That was the second time that I saw Eram make that uh, fall away turnaround shot. It's a tough shot, but lucky for them, they were able to regain possession. Couple of substitutions for Coach Chot Reyes as his team is protecting a 15 point lead, 64 to 49. With only 21.5 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Now you talk about efficiency. Look at Poy Aram. Only nine minutes of basketball action, but with a total of nine points too. So pretty much is one point per minute for uh, Poy Aram and Pugoy starting to light it up here in this ballgame. Last shot kukunin ng Barangay Hinebra here in the third quarter. No more fouls to give for either squad. Tenorio with a switch. Eram on him. LA freezing the big man. Flip shot won't work. Eram with the board. And that will be the end of it. The end of the third quarter of action. TNT Tropangiga establishing a lot of distance between them and the defending champion. 66 to 49 is the score. A 17 point lead for the top seeded squad in the elimination round fourth quarter when we come back.
fourth quarter of this ball game, RR Pogoy heating up in the third quarter alongside JP Era. Man, that has allowed the TNT Tropangiga to take complete control of this matchup as this game is brought to you by Honda. The official motorcycle of the PBA. Welcome back to the Don and Order Ventura State University Gym. Your Honda PBA Philippine Cup 2021. Carlo Pamento on Coach Ryan Gregorio for PBA Rush. One quarter to turn things around. One quarter to try and keep their title defense bid alive for Barangay Hinep. We're talking about quarters. Just a gargantuan quart middle quarters here for TNT. And look at the number of points that they were able to generate. 49 total points in the second quarter combined with third quarter while only allowing Barangay Hinebra to score 28 points. So the difference is a very high 21-point advantage for them because they were down by four points at the end of the first 12 minutes of basketball action. So you know that it is slow cooking here for uh, Tropang Giga just trying to tire out their opponent because uh, they've sensed it that in terms of uh, the number of uh, players in their rotation, their bench is a lot deeper and a lot of players are willing to contribute. This time around, Kabuntin, fresh, coming off the bench, will now have a chance to score two points here in the fourth. Bench scoring 25 to 15 in favor of TNT. But attuned to our discussions, it's the defense. They have 11 steals and now six blocks compared to six steals and zero blocks for Barangay Hinebra. Defensive intensity, the character. We all know that Coach Trot runs, you know, the dribble drive system, but they've been playing really good defense. As we say that, they get another stop here. Gobontin with the finish. Oh, what an incredible full court defense here for Tropang Giga, not allowing stand up. Oh, Stan Pringle to make that first outlet pass on the first uh, pass for them. And uh, the uh, defense continues here for Tropang Giga. Pringle from the outside, that's money. Second three-point shot of the ball game for Barangay Hinebra. They would need a lot more coming from him and the rest of the squad to be able to get back in this ball game. Now I was just looking at their elim elimination round meeting. We've talked about it extensively. 21 point advantage for TNT at the end of 48 minutes, 88 to 67. But the most significant number really is the steals department. 16 steals for TNT compared to only four for Barangay Hanebra. So it was no fluke because in tonight's ball game, a total of 13 steals already for Tropangiga. Would have been a big basket, but Prince Caperal is not in the same form as he was in that knockout match against Phoenix Super LPG. Kobuntin, corner pocket, three ball won't work. Easy pickup for Pringle. Jason Castro giving up a duty foul as he will be subbed out of this ball game. So what this does, coach, in, in limiting the minutes of, of Jason Castro is it allows your youngsters, Montalvo and Mikey Williams, to get a lot of burn. And also, you protect him for the deeper run at the playoffs. Yes, as far as uh, Coach Chotreus is concerned, he's not just preparing for a semifinal stint. He's definitely going all the way. And if they're going to the finals, because that's, uh, he needs Jason Castro's uh, fresh legs, and the, not just the physical aspect, but also the mind. Because when you play so many minutes, your mind is also tiring out. So this is good, uh, what you call the minutes restriction for Jason Castro. Only 20 minutes of uh, play thus far. Only seven points to show. But when was the last time, uh, probably in a conference we're in, you see Jason Castro only score seven, but his team is up by 17. Yep, yep. Mm. And that's the only number that matters. Yes. 69-52 after that three-point conversion from Pringle. No follow-up from the rest of his squad. Salado in the ball game to give LA Tenorio a short break here at this stage of the match. Reverse dip. What a gorgeous move coming from Mikey. Nineteen-point advantage now for the Tropangiga. Salado. 
Sends it down low to Stan Hardinger. Christian against Kelly. Oh, shot will not work. And there's an offensive foul, or maybe a loose ball foul against Capera. Yun yung problema, coach, no? If you're Christian Stan Hardinger, you contend with JP Aram for a stretch, and then you stay in the ball game, and you go up against a fresh Kelly Williams. It's just man after man. It's Dave Marcelo, it's someone else. You don't get a lot of rest, and then your defenders are all fresh off the bench. And constant chess match here. And uh, Coach Chotre is just identifying matchups. We saw earlier that JDV was trying to bully his way inside because he felt like his defender is much smaller and, and thinner in Glen Cabontin. So what did Coach Chetreas do? He called uh, Marcelo to, de to, to defend uh, JDV, and all of a sudden, there was no edge for JDV. So that is also what is happening here. Stan Hardinger seeing multiple defenses. Stan Pringle also, multiple defenders. And that, that will mess up even your approach to the game. Look at this move. Crossover. And then the reverse over the defense of Christian Stan Harding. And then much smaller defender. Quick step back, fade away Jay. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Mikey Williams. 11 points in the ball game for Mikey Williams. Adding seven rebounds, five assists. A steal and a block certainly helping out his cause to try and win best player of the conference. Oh, yes, and uh, you have to remember in the first two games, he only totaled 16 points mm -hmm. on six out of 29 shooting from the field. However, as far as Coach Reyes is concerned, there were no worries coming from TNT as they knew it could only take him a short amount of time to adjust, and that is exactly what happened. It was just exploding, and now you talk about the best or three best players in the conference. Talk about Calvin Abueva, the newest guy for Magnolia. Mikey Williams is there. And of course, Pollock. That's just a difference maker for Northport. So it's going to be a tight one for our player of the conference. So again, uh, whichever team gets the most success, whoever makes it to the finals will have an additional advantage in claiming that award. Kelly Williams off the glass too strong. Rebound for Salado. Salado will push. Euro step. Won't work on the layup. Ayai with the offensive rebound. MJ, good effort. Nothing there. Another rebound for Salado. Pringle with the defense closing out on him. Still pulls the trigger from deep. Another three point conversion from Stan the Man. And slowly but surely, is hitting his mark. Will there be enough time? Yes, there's still 7 and 24, 7 and 45 remaining here in the fourth quarter. And we've seen. A lot of strange things happen here in this conference. And you just don't count out Barangay Ginebra. Even if they're down by 17 points at this time of the ball game. Barangay Ginebra, San Miguel calling a timeout. And this one is brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. TNT still up by 17 against the defending champion. Even if TNT is ahead by 17 points, you cannot just count Barangay Ginebra out at this stage. Still a lot of time remaining. Seven minutes, 39 seconds. Mikey Williams, though, heating up with back-to-back -back buckets. Seven rebounds, five assists for an all-around performance for the rookie. 
As you said, Coach Ryan, we've seen weirder things oh, happen. Yes. Um, Meralco erased a uh, lead similar to this in the final two and a half minutes against Magnolia <laughs> in their matchup in the oh, elimination yes. round. I vividly remember that one. And then Yusum was uh, the, the guy who made that layup and uh, sealed that victory for Meralco Bots. Meruela missing on the three, but Rosario was all alone for the offensive rebound. Kib Montalvo will try, and he nails it. Again, they are missing three-point shots, but when you give them the offensive rebound, they will go back right to their strength. And then what about Kib Montalvo? 15 minutes, 10 points. Perfect from the field. Perfect from the three-point range. What a find for Coach Chot. Outside shot will not work. Aya Ay. Down low denied, another block registered by TNT, courtesy of Kelly Williams. Look at this offensive rebound. Often leads to openings and three-point range, and Kib Bontalbo makes the defense pay. Here we go, LA Tenorio coming back into this ball game. A possible last-ditch effort for Barangay Ginebra to keep their title retention bid alive here in the Philippine Cup. Good passing, nice extra pass. Sorry, miss for Stan Hardinger, but he takes care of it with the second effort. But the basket few and far apart for Barangay Ginebra. Good effort on defense to force that timeout coming from Brian Eruela. Might be a 30 second coming up here. No, it will be a full timeout for Coach Chot Reyes and TNT will be back after a few reminders. Kelly Williams for the TNT Tropangiga can still provide you with decent numbers, 7.6.6 rebounds. He plays about 25, 26 minutes per ball game. But his contributions are beyond what he can do on the stat sheet. As Coach Shotreya said, even before he agreed to come back for TNT, he called Kelly Williams, asked him to come back with him because it's all about the culture, it's all about the identity of TNT. Just a very important piece here in the puzzle of Tropangiga. You know that Kelly Williams is a six-time PBA champion, one time with Santa Lucia and five times with Tropangiga. He missed the last bubble. He was not able to don the Tropangiga uniform in the last conference, but now he is just so good here playing uh, not just spot jury, but significant minutes in the rotation of Coach Chot. Montalbo again, first miss of the ball game. For Kib, he has 10 points, 4 of 5 from the field. Halfway mark of the fourth quarter, 76-58 is the score. Tough pass to make, but there's a foul called. As Joe Devance fouled on the catch. Now unless a major miracle is about to commence, Barangay Hinebra still down by 18 points and uh, they must make their move right now with time down to 5 and 54 they must step on the gas and play like uh, obviously there is no tomorrow they miss this one then they're out Eli Tenorio yeah. though converting on a three just what the doctor ordered for them at this stage keeping them at least alive for the time being a giant step towards the right direction and launching a comeback here for Banaga Hinebra. That's an important basket made by L.A. Tenorio. Rosario, with the defense scrambling all over the floor for Barangay Hinebra. Eruela with six to work with. 
Brian steps back, gives it to Pogoy for three. That's short. Another good stop for Barangay Hinebra. Defending champion still in this. Penorio, another three on the way. Not this time. You can see Joe Devance really struggling to even go down the floor and play defense. Just fatigued. You, you can just see it. Just excruciatingly painful to see Joe, Joe Devance playing with so much effort, but you know that he is tired. RR Pogoy erases the LA Tenorio triple on the other side. Back to an 18 point Tropang Giga lead. Stan Hardinger down low. All defenders around him. It's just a straight up block one on one coming from Pogoy. Not a good idea for AI to challenge the defense of RR Pogoy. Castro now using the ball screen provided by Kelly. Kicks it out. Rosario for three. That's good. Back to back three point shots. Huge conversions from Pogoy and Rosario. As this is now the biggest lead of the ball game 21 points for TNT. First, R.R. Pogoy, Stanley Pringle were, was not able to close out long against him. And then Joe Devance did not have the legs to close out against Rosario. And when you're tired, it's just so much more difficult to play defense. And timely baskets here for Tropangiga. After L.A. Tenorio hit a shot from the outside, they were able to trim down the deficit to just 15. And after back-to-back -back threes, it now again exploded to a 21-point advantage and another miscue here. You can just sense that uh, of fatigue is really the biggest enemy here for Barangay Hinebra. They cannot make good decisions under the execution. Mental fatigue resulting to mental mistakes and not quick enough to defend the transition, allowing TNT to score on, on that fast break attack again. Three-point conversion for Stanley Pringle, but they are slowly running out of time in their title reign. These are the defending Philippine Cup champions, the champions of the PBA bubble. Will these be the final three minutes that they will play here in the conference? Castro, counter three, no good, too strong. Offensive rebound for Kelly. And now they will set up their offense. Rosario posting up against Dillinger. Choi. Draws a foul against Jared. JJ Alejandro enters the ball game for Mikey Williams. JP Eram will do the same. As Mikey Williams playing his first ever playoff game in the PBA. Will have 11 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists, a steal and a block. Did not shoot well from the field, but it was mostly at the start where he struggled. After the second quarter, he was able to calm down and bounce back. But already, with a comfortable advantage, is this TNT team. 20-point lead for them. Time down to 2 and 40. 0.7 to be exact. And defense again. Strong suit of TNT, JDV playing over 20 minutes yeah. in this ball game. You have to admire the effort of JDV. No, no, nothing but uh, tremendous love for the ball game. He tried, but obviously uh, in the end he just looked uh, tired because prior to this ball game, he was also playing on extended minutes, and uh, it's gonna catch up on you. So especially in a do or die match. Minute to watch, Stan Hardinger 39, Tenorio 37, Pringle 34. Just major minutes coming from the mainstays of Coach Tim Cohn. And yun yung pressure talaga eh. When you don't have a Japet Aguilar and don't have a Scotty Thompson, you'll have to rely even harder on, on the guys who can provide the offense for you. And unfortunately for them, Dillinger had a decent start, but 
Prince Caperal was not able to score a lot, not his usual numbers, not the numbers that he scored against Phoenix Super LPG, only with four on two of nine shooting from the field. And you talk about Jared Dillinger also scoring just four points in this uh, ball game. Now even the players who came off the bench, very limited rotation for coach Tim Cohn. Uh, uh, Tolentino did not play. And remember, Aljun Mariano only played 10 minutes yeah. because he rolled his ankle. And after that one, he did not see another action, another second here in this ball game. It was great effort coming from Christian Stan Hardinger. 17 points, 17 rebounds. Did everything he can to lift Barangay Ginebra, but just too many weapons for TNT. 11 from Mikey Williams, 10 for Montalbo, 16 for Pugoy, 15 for Rosario. And then you have JP Eram and Jason Castro playing off your bench. Yung matchup lang talaga, coach, when you are relying against a shorter rotation and then you run into the top team in the league that has, you know, what, 10 players who can see action, the numbers just did not add up for Barangay Ginebra in this matchup. Yes, uh, it's not a very good conference for Barangay Ginebra. They've lost more games than they've actually won. In the 11 games, they've won four out of seven. And uh, they just made it as the eighth seed after going up against Phoenix and winning in that knockout match to have the right to go up against uh, Tropang Giga. But uh, still an amazing run considering the number of injuries that they've had. Uh, usually other teams will just roll over and say, all right, we're not going to give in and we're not going to play with so much effort and we will just wait for the next conference. But not this Barangay Henebra team. It's just unfortunate for them that they had to face the best team in the elimination round, Tropang Giga with uh, a lot of uh, players that they can bank on. We've been talking about this uh, from the opening buzzer up to this point. The bench was the biggest difference in this particular ball game. Just incredible depth for the black shirts. So the bench now emptying out for Coach Shot Reyes, Eximiliano, Javier, Cabuntin, Alejandro, and, and Mendoza will be the five finishing things off here as Two more free throws will come up here for MJ Ayab. But, but coach, in terms of just the story of this matchup, it is like a photocopy of their last meeting. The final score in the last game was 88 to 67, right where we are right now in the vicinity of that matchup. And coach Tim Cohn said that TNT was barely challenged in the elimination round because of how well they got out of the gates, only losing one game to SMB. And it will continue to be the theme because everything that Barangay Ginebra tried, it was not enough to make TNT uncomfortable here in the second half. Uh, the worry at the start of this ball game was probably the, the rust factor because they have not played in, in so many games. And uh, you can actually see that. Uh, the opening uh, six minutes of this particular game, you see TNT struggle a little bit, not finding their comfort level offensively and uh, giving up a lot of easy baskets for Barangay Ginebra. But when things settled down, TNT was just such an efficient machine and they were able to win this one with a lot to spare. So this impending loss from Barangay Ginebra guarantees a new champion will be crowned in your Honda PBA Philippine Cup 2021. The champions are out. TNT, Tropangiga, the number one team at the end of the elimination round is the first team to make it into the semifinals as they win 84 to 71 against Barangay Ginebra, San Miguel. It was a tough start for TNT, but after the first quarter, they had complete control of this matchup. Oh yes, the first quarter was still controlled by Barangay Ginebra. 21 to 17 advantage for them. But the middle quarters, we talked about that. A total of 49 points in 24 minutes for Tropang uh, Giga, while Jin King only, only scored 28 points. Our next level player of the game is Troy Rosario with 15 points, five rebounds and three assists. And he is brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. Outstanding effort coming from Troy, even if the shot did not fall for him in the first quarter. He missed three or four outside shots. He just stayed patient, waited for the game to come to him. And when it did, 
it allowed TNT to break away and win this ball game comfortably dethroning Barangay Ginebra San Miguel. So, our schedule for tomorrow, that's a Thursday. Northport Batang Pier will try to stay alive against the San Miguel Beermen. That game starts at 2 p.m. And then right after that, we will be featuring the Rain or Shine Elasto Painters also wanting to force a do or die against the Magnolia, Pambansang Manok, Hot Shots. Your best of three quarter finals will continue tomorrow. And then on Friday, we have the Meralco Bolts going up against the NLEX Road Warriors as we have the updated playoff bracket TNT, the top team in the league will be the first one to book their ticket into the semi-finals they will await the winner of San Miguel versus North Ford on the other side, Meralco and Lex versus the winner of Magnolia Rain or Shine as we send it over to our press conference with the winning head coach yeah, and best player of the game. game interview joining us our TNT Tropangiga head coach Chot Reyes and our best player of the game Troy Rosario. Congratulations coach, congratulations to Um Troy, ano yung pakiramdam na na-eliminate niyo yung Ginebra na tumalo sa inyo sa finals last year? Ah, uh, syempre masaya kasi uh, bagong team. Uh, bagong conference, tapos uh, yung team na nag-eliminate sa amin sa finals ng last conference eh, tinalo namin. Uh, talagang yung unang uh, sinabi sa amin ni Coach Kaninas uh, sa pregame, yung urgency. Uh, how bad do we want it today? Kasi alam namin na uh, pag binigyan namin sila ng chance, uh, talagang 50-50 na yun pagdating na second game. So, nalapasan namin yung challenge ngayon we're into the next one. Thank you, Troy. Coach, how tough was it battling a Ginebra team who's determined to extend the series? Oh, very tough. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, congratulate Coach uh, Tim Cohn and his coaching staff. I thought, the, you know, facing the manpower shortages that they have, uh, they came out with a, a very good uh, game plan. They, they really made it very, very difficult. Uh, the start was, uh, was extremely difficult for us. Um, but in the end, we kind of talked about it and we've been off for 10 days. And so we expected that we wouldn't be as sharp uh, to start the ball game. And so we discussed that uh, we just need to keep uh, grinding and uh, uh, count on our defense to be able to stay in this game. So, um, you know, uh, the, the game was a lot harder than the score indicated. Coach, you talked about uh, a long break. Uh, before battling Ginebra. Um, you'll be having another break before facing the winner of tomorrow's game. Um, how would you keep your boys fresh? Um, I thought one of the good things that we did in this 10-day break was we we had uh, we were able to alternate between uh, recovery, rest, and, and, uh, and pushing hard. Um, and we were very, very um, conscious of it. Uh, great job by our uh, conditioning staff, our training staff, to make sure that they were pushing the guys just enough, but not to overextend them and not to burn them out. Uh, and now we're going to uh, face another situation. And uh, as much as uh, we'd like to be happy over uh, beating Hinebra, we know that there's another tough uh, opponent ahead. Whether well, that, that uh, San Miguel is looking like it now because they won that first game, but. Uh, you know, uh, that, that's, a, that's another big mountain uh, for us uh, to climb and to prepare for. But, you know, we'll, that, that, can, that can wait. For now, we just uh, wanted to make sure that we get to the semifinals first. Thank you very much, Coach. Now we turn you over to our press friends. First up is Mr. Ruben Terado. Good evening po. Um, question ko po kay Troy. Uh, Troy, yung next matchup mo, I mean, sa next round, it's going to be either Dunmar or Greg, as, as far as big man is concerned. So how are you preparing for that? Ano mo sayo mo dun sa magiging matchup, possible matchup between those two guys? Uh, para sa akin, hindi lang naman ako yung, ano, yung pag-usapan dyan. Eh. Kailangan yung team defense namin. Kasi hindi ko kaya yun, yung Dunmar, Fardo. <laughs> Kasi sa, sa laki ni Dunmar. Sa, sa experience niya, talagang kakailanganin namin yung buong team para yun na, uh, magkaroon ng chance sa kanila. Um, follow up po. Uh, coach, follow up po uh, with the Hinebra's team. Do you think 
with a complete roster, do you think it's going to be a different ball game kung if Scotty was there, if the others were also there? Oh, certainly. Uh, no, we're not kidding ourselves. Uh, uh, you know, I I'm sure every team in the, in, the, in the league would not want to face Inebra in the quarterfinals, uh, more so if they had a complete roster. But then again, if Inebra had a complete roster, I doubt if we'd find them, if, if they would be in eighth place, right? So it is what it is. Um, uh, that's the way it turned out. And uh, like I said, um, we are just now focused on uh, uh, preparing ourselves for uh, the semifinal battle up ahead. Up next is Mr. Ray Morgan. Uh, this uh, first question is for Troy. Troy, congratulations. No? And, uh, thank you, thank nakita you. Naman natin last, last year, nakapasok kayo ng finals. No? Pero looking at the look, looking at the TMT now, ano sa tingin mo yung mga improvements na nangyari dito sa team mo? No team nyo so far? Um, marami. Uh, uh, isa na doon yung defense namin. Uh, talagang yun, yun yung mga yun, yun defense namin yung nagdala sa amin dito. Uh, we limit the uh, opponents uh, certain points. Talagang tulong-tulong sa depensa. Tsaka sa opensa, uh, kung sino lang yung ma-open eh. Uh, kung sino yung may, may better shot, talagang yun yung tumitira. These are the highlights of your matchup between the TNT Tropangiga and Barangay Hinebra, San Miguel TNT, the number one team after the end of the elimination round, holding a twice to beat advantage. But it was Hinebra that got off to a strong start because of the interior peasants of Christian Sandharder and now Prince Capera. Oh, yes, a lot of uh, early scoring for Barangay Hinebra. But the, the problem really. If you're Branga Hinebra, will they be able to sustain it? Shots from uh, Tropangiga did not fall in, especially their first six attempts. They were not shooting well, especially from the three-point area. In fact, at the end of the first 12 minutes of basketball action, Branga Hinebra were up by four points, 21 to 17. But the middle quarter, especially the second quarter, it was all TNT. And it was a little bit of their offense, but a lot because of their defense. Mikey Williams converting on his first three-point shot at that stage. They were down by six, but they were able to inch their way back into the contest and take the lead with a 7 to nothing run. This was the response to end that rally coming from Jared Dillinger. And you talk about the second quarter performance of TNT. Usually, you're going to rely on the big-name players, Troy Rosario, even Pugoy or Mikey Williams. But I thought the biggest contributor here in the second quarter for TNT was a heads-up play of two guys, Ryan Reyes and Brian Hervella. Because the moment they stepped in, a seven-point disadvantage became a four-point advantage for them. And after that, it was all TNT up to the final buzzer. Steals and blocks remain to be the big advantage of TNT Tropangiga. They defended Barangay Hinebra well, limiting them to only 12 points in that second quarter. The same story would play out in the third with J.P. Aram getting an end one opportunity. Oh, there was a segment in the game where J.P. Aram, who only played nine minutes in this quarter, was also able to generate nine points. So, very efficient basketball play for uh, J.P. Aram. And he was not just there offensively, he was also credited with a lot of block shots. But the defense, forcing steals, turning it into precious baskets, Jason Castro accounting for two points, and Barangay Hinev just having a hard time executing. We've talked about it. Yes, it is physical fatigue. But with the physical fatigue is also what you call the mental fatigue that, is, uh, that has hounded Barangay Hinebra because of uh, the limitations that they have in their player rotation. And, and that was when things started to get comfortable for the TNT Tropangiga. Kib Montalbo having himself a ball game with 10 points. Four of five from the field. R.R. Pogoy also helping out in the fourth quarter. R.R. Pogoy finished with 16 points on six of 15 shooting. And then Rosario hitting a three-point shot there. He was our best player of the game with 15 points, five rebounds, and three assists. But it was just the all-around effort. Just so many weapons available, so many players stepping up for Coach Chotreya. And the advantage really was uh, TNT 
having a 10-day break before this ball game while Barangay Hinebra had to go through the eye of the of, of the needle going up against uh, Phoenix uh, LPG in that knockout match and eventually Barangay Hinebra saying goodbye to this conference. And there you have it, TNT punching the first ticket into the semifinals. More quarter final action in the coming days, but that will be it for this game day for Coach Ryan Gorio. I'm Carlo Pamintuan. See you again tomorrow for more of your PBA Philippine Cup 2021.